when you you think about what a business sells, I don't care if you're selling designs. I don't care if you're selling fixtures. You know, maybe you're in the hardware portion of the business and you're selling fixturing. Really, all businesses sell just one thing, and that one thing is reactions. You want to sell positive outcomes for your, your customers, and you want to see that smiling face when you're done building that house, when you're done doing that remodel. You want to see your clients just overjoyed. That you want to see them emotional. Uh, you want to make them cry, uh, maybe if you can, right? <laughs> <laughs> cry in a good way. <laughs> in a good way. Uh, I knew I, I knew I'd get that reaction from you, Dan. Right? <laughs> well, you know, the first time you told me this, first time we talked about this slide, it's like, yeah, God, that's easy. I mean, you think about it. I mean, that's really what we're all selling. You know, we're, yeah. we're selling. Well, we sell lots of stuff, but the b b bottom line is, you know. How when we leave the job, what is our customers' reaction? Is the customers, I hate those guys. They screwed me over so bad. I'll never, you know, blah blah blah. Or those guys are wonderful. I want everybody in the world to know about them and you know, you know, promote them to death. Yeah, um, and and you don't want that buyer's remorse. I mean, how many times? Uh, hopefully not a lot, but you know, people buy things and then once the transaction's done, they take possession of the house or the new car or something. They go. Oh man, did I do the right thing? It's really yeah. not as nice as I thought it was going to be. You, you got to make sure that you can do everything in your power to make sure that that that, that handover, um, you know, is a positive experience, and and that they don't have any buyer's remorse when they're done with that big sixty thousand dollar kitchen remodel project and all those new cabinetries in and the new lighting and everything just looks gorgeous. That they sit back and they go, man, I got more than I really expected. Yeah, well, That's the reaction love, you want, right? Well, I love Anne Marie's comment. Uh, my best reaction is a customer wants to give me a hug. So <laughs> that is exactly yeah. that is what you're striving for: is more yeah. hugs. I like that. You know. So how do you rec how do you rectify <laughs> Anne Marie adds? How do you rectify a customer's negative or disappointing experience or reaction? That's kind of a tough. That's kind of a broad question to answer. It, it is hard question because it's not. Uh, it's something that is a process, right? You know, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay. So let me let me continue on that thought for a minute about reactions. Your your customer is always going to have some kind of reaction to every engagement, every interaction they have with you, whether it's sitting down from the initial proposal to you know taking possession of the finished job at the end they're going to have multiple reactions and they could be good bad or indifferent of course our job is to make them all good right but they're they're going to have a reaction because people are human right uh, we're not all mr spocks and, and so i'm showing some of my geekiness and in my age by uh, showing you know mr spock here but Customers aren't logical beings. They're, they don't ask the questions about how much does it cost and what's the feature. They do, but at the end of the day, they're really thinking more about how do I feel about this project? What will my friends think? What will my neighbors think? How will it affect me? They're really thinking more like Homer Simpson, who's more interested in pleasure and, and feeling they're not going through all the dollars and cents and that nature. They want to know more about outcomes. So mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. when you talk about reactions, you got to remember people are human and they're not ruled by logic. They're ruled by emotion, right? Right. So the question you got to ask yourself is: Are we adding to people's positive reactions or are we subtracting from them? And this is something I'll, I'll attribute. Dan gave me the lead on this uh, particular chart that I guess it's often referred to as remodeling fever, but I thought it really illustrated the roller coaster of emotional reactions people go through, especially in projects like you guys do. So from the day you're all excited about the job beginning to the day they start doing the drywall sanding and there's dust everywhere and the kitchen's a mess, there's highs and lows in your job if you can, to the best of your ability, is to make sure that the expectations are set up front, that the customer understands they're going to go through these emotional highs and lows. And, and maybe that uh, step number five here in drywall sanding, maybe it doesn't 
the low spot is a little bit higher. Maybe the uh, trough isn't as low as it is here, right? Yeah. And, and guys, this is a great, great uh, slide. And actually, Walt, I learned this from Walt Steppelworth back in the early 80s. Uh, he talked about this quite a bit, remodeling fever. It's, it's our job as contractors to recognize when our customers are reaching that low point in, every, in the remodeling project because it happens. And, and, and it's our job to interact and, and get them, you know, clarify to them, hey, this is normal, you're feeling normal, just just hang on, we're going to get you back up here to, you know, you know, up to the top of the chart here as soon as we can. And just, just hang in there. And I'd be curious to know, do any of you guys out there talk to your customers about this before you start a project? I used to have a, a form I used that talked about this, and I would explain it before the project started. And I would explain that, okay, when we're going to dig the hole and we're going to put the foundation in, and you're going to look at it and go, God, that room looks so small. Why, did we, why didn't we make it bigger? And I'm saying that's a normal reaction. Once we get the floor on and the walls up, you're going to walk in the room and go, wow, this is a big room. Um, so, that, that, again, normal reaction. So if you point that stuff out ahead of time, uh, dealing with your customer, you know, you're gonna, those emotions that they're going to be feeling, you can level that line out a little bit. You're still going to have your peaks and valleys, but you can level it out. Just Google um, remodeling fever and hit your images tab, and you sh I think you'll find this chart. You'll find some other ones, too, that talk about this a little bit. It's a great, yeah. con it's a great thing to talk about with your customers when it comes to that customer experience. So. Yeah, I think it's a perfect example. And, and the example you just talked about, Dan, is a perfect example of managing the experience, right? You proactively told them that they're going to have these types of roller coaster emotions throughout the project. And by proactively informing them of the and setting expectations, you know, so often experience management is about managing and setting expectations. Mm -hmm. You can avoid all those negative feelings and uh, you know some of that buyer's remorse or um, you know getting negative comments on social media just by the may the fact that you set expectations up front and then kept repeating those expectations as the project went along to the point where it sunk in. You can't just do it once and then say, oh, they're going to remember it for the length of the project. You know, you also kind of got to remind them throughout that this is normal and that's where the keeping them informed comes in as well. I used to, right? I used to have a form that, had, that listed everything that was going to go wrong on your project. <laughs> and, I, and I would, then it also had a little bit about, you know, hey, you, you hired a reputable guy here, we're going to take good care of you. So just expect that these things, they just happen. It's the stuff happens. Uh, but we'll be there to take care of it and make it right. Don't worry about it. And uh, I would have them sign that form as part of the agreement, the contract. And I, there's on more than one occasion, I, I pulled that out halfway through the project because the customers were just like, you know, so depressed because they reached one of those valleys. And I said, remember we talked about this in the beginning here. I even had you sign the form. They go, oh, that's right. Then they're put at ease. And it's just like, and on we go. Yeah. So, so, so this is a good example of yeah. um, managing expectations. Yeah.